And this is a Cosmic Queries edition on science in pop fiction. Ooh, what does that mean? I got my resident geek in chief with me, Charles Liu. Charles, welcome back to Star Talk. What a pleasure You're like to such be a here. regular on this show. <laughs> I live to serve. Thank oh, you for having there me. There he goes. And Chuck Nice. That's right. As always, dude. That's right. Always a pleasure to be here, man. All right. So you got we solicited questions. We have science in pop fiction. So Chuck, what do you have? On shows like the Orville and many others, they often communicate with people light years away. They never explain how they do it. Maybe there's a wire that passes through a tiny wormhole to connect Earth. Uh, what I'm wondering, though, is if they were able to reliably share the same sense of time for the duration of their conversation, would one of them sound like a chipmunk <laughs> and the other sound like they're in slow motion? What other weird effects might occur? That's a great That's question. That's a really great question. Because, you know, we're so distracted by, well, that wouldn't make noise in the vacuum of space. Right. And this person's thinking deep. Yes, he is. About Good. conversations. We have this issue with communicating with the Mars rover. Right. The Mars rover. What's be, the delay on the Mars it's rover? It's on average about 20 minutes. So, is it, so you, you're hello. Like, watch, watch out for the cliff and it's right. too late. So you got to make sure. <laughs> watch out for the cliff. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> That's why the, the rovers all have some kind of AI on them to right. know where they're headed and and how dangerous it might be, right. regardless of what command we give them. It's like having a lousy parent <laughs> at the playground. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so let's say so clearly they're communicating with people much farther away than just Earth to Mars. Right. So I'm thinking it's got to be some wormhole uh, channel. Charles, you got a, an opinion about that? In Star Trek specifically, there is this construct called subspace, subspace. Yeah. which transcends regular space and time. And basically anything that happens in subspace, you can just assume works just as if you and I were next door to each other or in the same room. In real time. Yes, but that completely doesn't affect the entire rest of space and time. It's really a, it's a false, convenient. entertaining, convenient construct. It'd be cool if that were the thing, right? Yeah. Right? right, it would. So Verizon Fios, eat your heart out. Right. <laughs> okay. So the comments about whether or not you sound like a chipmunk or you talk really slowly. <laughs> so that kind of uh, effect is what we call the Doppler effect, right. right? Especially the Doppler effect for sound. And Neil, you and I understand that very well. Uh, just when we're out on the streets in New York and the ambulance goes by or something like that. No, right? they go the by too slowly to have any Doppler effect at all. That, well, in New York, they do. Yeah. <laughs> in Russia. Matter of fact, every time I see an ambulance in New York, I'm like, that guy's dead. <laughs> Chuck. Chuck. <laughs> I'm just saying. It's like sitting at a light for 20 minutes. <laughs> woo! Woo! Have you ever watched a superhero sci-fi movie that hadn't made you cringe and if so, what was it? I think that let's frame that positively. Is there a superhero or sci-fi movie that you have watched and appreciated the amount of science that was built in and the uh, the level of science accuracy? Let, well, let's trade off. You're, okay. Give me a movie, and I'll give you a movie, and we'll just and we'll go down the list. Maybe we can do like how long did it take before I started to cringe or okay. something like that? Okay. Right? The movie that made me cringe least. Least. It was interesting. The 1966 Batman movie. The original no, Batman? Original no, no, Batman no. Not, that's the one we had shark repellent in a spray that's can. Right. That was that's also no, Batman. Not the one wait, where, no. they, where they all became yes. powder? Yes. yes. And then they used the heavy water. Yep. They used heavy yep. water to bring them back? <laughs> that's right. that's and right. they went. <laughs> and, they <completely laughs> and, and they're identical to each other, except they're speaking each other's languages. languages. That's right. That's right. Well, which, by the way, is uh, <laughs> almost as believable as the Tower of Babel. Explain. So the reason it wasn't cringeworthy for me is because I knew that it was totally Can't goofy be. to begin with. So in that vein, right. my movie where I just said, okay, I am leaving all reality behind, reality the, no matter what, was suspending was all disbelief. Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. Yes! Attack, Attack of the, of the Killer, Killer Tomatoes! tomatoes. Yeah. All right. Okay. okay, so the tomatoes just jumping and smothering people, yes. and I said, okay. <laughs> oh my God, uh, yeah. I'm dying by deliciousness! <laughs> <laughs> but, my only regret is I still don't know if you're a fruit or a vegetable. <laughs> <laughs> For current universe superhero things, yeah. the thing, the least cringeworthy superhero movie that I've actually seen is Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange? Ooh. And the reason that doesn't cringe me, the premise of the movie is that none it's of this is science anyway. Or 
as say yeah, Reed Richards, right, right? As yeah, Reed Richards okay. would say on his, you know, the Fantastic Four comic mm-hmm. series, he, he regularly would say, "I acknowledge that science, uh, that magic." is a science I do not yet understand. He did say that. That's right. Yes. And so as a result- So did Princess Bubblegum, by the way. I, I don't mean to boast. Ooh. Okay, you can line up for autographs later. Okay. <laughs> but I have a cameo in Sharknado 6. Out of their way, there's a Sharknado coming. The plot line takes you back to medieval times. Okay. Uh-huh. I play Merlin. There, there's a time warp that opens in the vortex. Of course there is. <laughs> okay. I mean, what And else the sharks, as they go through the vortex, they end up crossbreeding in this vortex with dragons. And so you have shark dragon tornadoes back then. Okay, wow. shark dragon nados. And I play Merlin performing actual science that everyone thinks is magic. Because nice. you, because you're still a scientist. Because I'm a scientist, right. and that was I was true to my right. my roots. Now you do that. realize that you can say no to these projects. <laughs> <laughs> hey Chuck, will it one day be possible for entire societies to disguise themselves in plain sight as Wakanda did in the Marvel universe? How close are we to developing? Invisibility technology. So let's get the, the top presentations of that. So you have yeah. the cloaking device on Star Trek. Yeah. yeah. And also one of the James Bond movies. Right. I forgot which one it was called, mm-hmm. but it has something called adaptive camouflage. Yeah. So w- you could park it and whatever it was in front of, mm-hmm. it would bring that pattern to the car and you'd walk by it and you just thought you were looking at a normal scene. Right. So there's that. There was also cloaking in... Chicken Little. Okay. <laughs> Excuse me. Is my cinematic repertoire too large for you? Well, probably so. <laughs> okay. Anytime you're referencing okay. Chicken Little. The li- sky is falling. was it's not falling. a real sky. There were hexagonal tiles mm-hmm. that the aliens had put over the earth, ah. and the tile is an exact image of what is behind it. Right. And when a tile fell down, it fell to the ground, and Chicken Little looked at it, and touched it, and it immediately became the floorboards. Right. And he put it on the table, it became the table. And nice. so there's five minutes of this movie doing experiments with the hexagonal tile. Sweet. Love it. So basically it's cloaking by not becoming invisible, but by becoming what is behind Camouflaged. it. Camouflaged. Camouflage. The yeah. cloak in Harry Potter. The cloak in Harry Potter, you have the invisible woman, uh, Fantastic Four character, okay. uh-huh. right? Who right. can turn she invisible. She can turn invisible. Right. And then you have the entire city being cloaked, right? Yes. Yeah. So can we, can we cloak yeah. an entire city? The, the well, answer, in Wakanda, yeah, they, yeah. they well, did that. Um, the answer at the moment is... No. <laughs> I'm guessing... <laughs> guessing let, let, we can't do a city. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm bet, going let, out on a Chuck, limb. Chuck, let's bet yeah. on that one. Yeah, we're okay. going to go out on a limb here. All can't right. do a city. Chuck, can we cloak a whole city? No. 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 At the moment, the answer is that we can seem to be able to bend light around objects in such a way that the object would not be visible to someone looking at it because all they'd see is the background. And you don't even know the light is bending. That's you right. just see the direction the light comes from at the last point of contact. That's right. That's right. So right. the light can do a full 360, full 360 yeah. 180, doesn't yeah, matter. Right. And you look at if all the right. light coherently comes around the object, right? again, you've rendered it um, invisible. That is at this moment only doable in the laboratory under very extreme conditions and, and sort of at the subatomic level. Basically. Okay. However, Charles. But I thought wait, wait, were, if, I thought the, I thought DARPA was working on a cloak like that's that. That's the kind is, of thing. Is that it? Is I that I what? Refer. Okay. I'm not authorized to speak any further on. That. Uh, <laughs> so, but, but Chuck, here's that a problem. Speak any further on the that. city is sitting on the ground. Yes. You can't bring light from behind the city around it. Right. So it so that technology wouldn't work to hide a city. Right. It would only hide objects in front of other things. Well, in this case, in Wakanda, they had, it was a dome that covered the city as well. Right. There was some kind of like force dome Mm -hmm. that then cloaked the city. Right. The dome in that case was really just almost a mirror. In a sense, it projected upon itself Fake oh. pastoral images oh, okay. of goat herders. Okay, and so it didn't disappear. It's, like just a, it's just a it's projection just, screen. It's just right. a projection screen. And then you had to get through it, and then you saw all the marvelous technology gotcha. and so on. Gotcha. Right. Cool. So that, that we can do. We're that already we projecting do. movies onto skyscrapers, aren't we? You don't know got me about are. Wakanda. How is it that down in the town, this with all this technology and all this ma- and all this stuff, mm-hmm. they're still selling woven baskets <laughs> in the street? I, what's what's up with that? I, I they, believe it's very simple. What? 
because they realize they essentially have infinite wealth mm-hmm. and infinite technology. Yeah. What makes them happy? It's not the toys. Baskets. It's <laughs> baskets. <laughs> what superpower would you like to have that could be theoretically enabled by gene editing? Oh, Charles, you go okay. first. I would say, and I know this might seem a little goofy, but with gene editing, the best thing that I could hope for for myself is that my genes make it so that I will stay as mentally and physically in perfect health as long as I want. Charles, no one is making a movie about that. (laughs) Maybe not. All right, Niels, what would yours be? So Charles is going to live forever. I've thought about this, actually. So what I would do is I'd say, give me genes that a snake has where I can open my mouth five times bigger than my head. So I can finally eat <laughs> so can, the sandwich at the deli. <laughs> Pastrami sandwich at the deli. Okay, but that's not a superpower. That's just, that I want to throw that in there. Just okay, for that. okay. Right, okay. Um, snakes can detect in, in infrared. infrared. Okay. okay. Insects can see deeply in the ultraviolet. Right. Which is why bug zappers work, because they're ultraviolet. And they said, I gotta go to the ultraviolet. And then they die. So I want to be able to see infrared, <laughs> see ultraviolet, also, I want to be able to gene edit other people so that I can help regenerate the limbs of veterans who lost limbs defending this country. Cool. And newts can regenerate can, limbs. Right, exactly. Humans can't. It is in the genome of the tree of life to regenerate limbs. And so I want to be able to have that to then impart that in fellow humans. And so that everybody gets their limbs back. That's the mm-hmm. kind of thing we do. Well, I'm going with super strength and sprouting wings like a beetle so that I don't have wings all the time because, you know, that probably get on my nerves when I'm trying to sleep. Oh, so you that. want wings that tuck in right. under an tuck exoxoskeleton. In under an exoskeleton, <laughs> pop out when I want to fly, and then super strength. And by the way, I'm not helping anybody. I'm going on a life of crime. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so you'd be a super villain. I'd be a super villain, yeah. without a doubt. And then you guys could figure out a way to stop me. 